Welcome back, guys. Uh, the last part of F net equals zero, we're going to talk about Hooke's Law. And Hooke's Law is named after Robert Hooke, who was a person who discovered this. Uh, any spring that obeys Hooke's Law is known as an ideal spring. And the idea of an ideal spring is that if you stretch a certain distance with a given force, if you double that force, that distance would, trip, would double. If you triple the force, the distance would triple. So... The spring force is proportional to displacing the spring, and that's going to be Hooke's law. So this is given two ways. You can either say that f of s, which is the spring, is equal to negative kx, or you could say that the absolute value of f of x is equal to k absolute value of x. Both of these are acceptable. So the reason why it is negative, if I have a horizontal spring and I stretch it a distance x, I exert a positive force on it to pull it to the right. The spring itself is going to try to pull back to the left. That's a negative force. So with a positive displacement, I put a negative force in the spring. If I compress it, I'm pushing it to the left. That's a negative displacement. Now, in the spring, there's a positive force going back. And so it's always in the opposite direction. So here, I displace it positively. There's a negative force. Here, I displace it negatively. There's a positive force. Here, there's, I displace it positively. There's a negative force. So the distance that a spring is stretched from equilibrium is related to the force by this equation. The units for this K, which is going to be unique to every spring, our spring force constant is newtons per meter. So K is going to be F of S over X. A spring is stretched from rest by a 10 newton force of 10 centimeters. Find the spring constant K. How far will a 25 newton force stretch the spring? So these are easy. So I'm going to say that the absolute value of f of s is equal to k, absolute value x. So k is going to be equal to absolute value f of s over x. So this is going to be 10 newtons over 0.1 meters for our little k. And k is very often just a generic constant all throughout science. We use that. So it's 100 newtons per meter. And so the question is, how far will a 25 newton force stretch the spring? So how far is a distance question, not a displacement question? So I'm going to divide both sides by k. And I get that 25 newtons over 100 newtons per meter is going to give me a 0.25 meter stretch. And that's probably what you thought. If 10 newtons stretches at 10 centimeters, you'd expect 25 newtons to stretch at 25 centimeters. An ideal spring has a spring constant of 500 newtons per meter. How far would a 15 kilogram mass stretch it? Again, looking at our formula, this is on your equation sheet, and it'll show up as the year goes through. X is going to be equal to F of S over K. Uh, 15 kilograms is a mass. To make this a weight, I need to multiply it by... So it would be 150 newtons divided by 500 newtons per meter. And no, so this is going to give me a distance of, need a calculator again. Thirty centimeters. 
0.3 meters.